Now to the security front, the Israel Defense Force carried out airstrikes in the Gaza Strip overnight. It's on response to a spate of arson balloons from Gaza that set at least nine fires on Israeli border communities throughout the day. Now the army said it hit a Hamas weapons factory, a terror tunnel, and an underground rocket launcher they said was located in a heavily populated area near a school. No casualties were reported in Gaza, but tensions have spiked in recent days despite a reported agreement between Israel and Hamas within the last week. Now we jump down to the border area there where our defense correspondent Daniel Tzemach is standing by here. Uh, Daniel, just uh, break down what happened yesterday to bring us to, to the point here today. Where do things stand? Right, David. So uh, last night's uh, response by the Israeli Air Force uh, didn't end there. From what we understand, the IDF also releasing another announcement a few hours later in the very early morning hours saying that during the IAF strikes, uh, Israeli planes were targeted by uh, machine gun fire, uh, presumably by the militants, of course, in Gaza, whether it be Hamas or otherwise, which prompted another Israeli strike also targeting a tunnel uh, entry, uh, you could say in the city of Khan Yunus within the Gaza Strip. So we're talking about two tunnels uh, that appear to have been targeted. You mentioned their weapons manufacturer as well as an underground rocket launching site, all in response to those uh, ten some fires that were started yesterday as a result of incendiary balloons, and also in light of the fact that we're, of course, seeing uh, the continuation of the tension. We are expecting there to be protests here akin to what we saw over the weekend, David, on the border there behind us uh, on Wednesday in the early afternoon hours and we do understand now that Israeli media is starting to report uh, new developments from within Egypt who's of course played a very integral role in achieving calm brokering of course that uh, new agreement through Qatar to provide money for the hundred thousand families Egypt apparently pressuring Hamas to put an end to those border riots something that we saw uh, for well over a year and a half 2018 to 2019 really ending right before the pandemic in December 2019 those riots uh, caused a lot lot of uh, trouble for the residents uh, in, in southern Israel here on the Israeli border communities. Of course, also for those that participated in the riots, hundreds of Palestinians uh, killed militants as well. And ultimately, uh, the concern is that right now, given these recent incidents, given this idea of uh, the Israeli uh, border police officer who was shot still in, in serious condition in Israeli hospital, that this, this situation could develop towards an escalation. And again, we're seeing Egypt chiming in here, trying to prevent that from happening. We can also say, David, the latest in regards to that incident over the border uh, on Saturday uh, afternoon, that that border officer was shot through a small hole in the wall. Apparently, the IDF has decided to close those sort of openings in the wall in light of what they have discovered through that investigation. David? Seems like a, 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 the least of their response there to close a, the hole in the wall. There's certainly a lot happening on that front there. Daniel Semach, thanks for breaking it down for us. Certainly more to come in the coming days, as you mentioned. Now we're taking a short break here, live still from Tel Aviv. We're joined by IDF Reserve Colonel Alon Eviatar, Palestinian Affairs expert and former COGAD advisor, joining us from Jerusalem now with so much taking place around the Gaza Strip just in recent days here. We need your expertise here. Now, last at the end of last week, we saw at least reports indicating there were agreements with Hamas in place that we we're perhaps in for a chapter of quiet. But then suddenly all the unrest over the weekend and more protests now apparently planned by Hamas in the coming days. What's happening on that front? Well, I think that your question bringing us uh, to the main uh, conclusion or the main uh, issue about Gaza Strip. Gaza Strip is still uh, a powder uh, uh, or explosive keg. I think that uh, the main problem is that uh, for Israel, that Israel doesn't have a strategic policy uh, above, uh, about Gaza Strip, but I think that the main uh, issue is that uh, um, I don't think that we can uh, come to uh, a quiet uh, period and uh, a real uh, security stability in Gaza Strip because uh, we have a deal or we have to uh, uh, fight a terror organization. And this is the main conclusion for my uh, 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 my thinking. I, I think that uh, the Hamas organization uh, control Gaza Strip uh, uh, with, with a, a support from Iran. And we have to remember it, that uh, there isn't any arrangement uh, in Gaza 
that could lead us uh, to on bring us to uh, a longer stability. Sounds like you're describing and here I this what we've seen play out here that uh, you know this mixed messaging going on, uh, no clear policy of deterrence emerging from this new government, stuck in a perpetual well, dilemma. Right. We are coming back to the main uh, question: What is the, uh, deterrence? What is uh, uh, the suitable or the comfortable uh, situation for Israel uh, state uh, about the Gaza Strip. And I think that uh, meantime, uh, we didn't uh, see uh, any, um, I will say, uh, uh, policy by uh, Hamas even. Uh, I think that uh, after, uh, three months after the uh, last uh, conflict with uh, Gaza, I think that uh, nothing ha has been changed on the ground. Uh, I think that uh, Hamas, uh, uh, we still think that uh, the, the, the money from Qatar, the money, uh, the, the cash money from Qatar is the main problem. And I think it's not the main problem. Because, all, the, uh, all the latest reports indicate Hamas since that flare up in May is at double time working on rebuilding their tunnel infrastructure, rebuilding their rocket arsenal that, again, they're focused on rebuilding for the next round. I, I want to bring another angle into the story here. Egypt clearly so involved. I mean, they shut their border at Rafah in Definitely, uh, based on the uh, provocations over the weekend here, Israel's border notably remains open, good still flowing into Gaza here. But what is the Egyptian role? Prime Minister Bennett has been invited to go to Cairo. That's almost unprecedented. So clearly they're, they're taking a major role here. Egypt uh, play a main role in this game. Uh, I think that uh, in this conflict, I think that uh, Egypt uh, has uh, uh, different uh, calculate about uh, uh, about Gaza. Um, Egypt uh, doesn't hesitate while they have uh, some uh, uh, misunderstanding with Hamas. Egypt uh, just uh, close uh, Rafah border. This is the automatically response. Uh, close Rafah border, uh, cut the connection with the uh, headquarter of Hamas, and that's all. I think that uh, throwing the ball to the uh, Israeli side, this is the main policy uh, till now. And I think uh, um, we are before the uh, meeting between uh, Prime Minister Bennett and the uh, president of uh, Egypt. I think that uh, Israel prefer uh, till now, in spite of the problems with Gaza, Israel prefer to calm down the issues, to calm down the situation and uh, not to escalate uh, the situation uh, in the southern front. And I think that Hamas use this um, insensitive and the, the tension, the last tension, to, the, to increase their demands for not just, you, you, you mentioned easings, but not just easings, not just uh, materials uh, infrastructure, but also uh, to create a new situation uh, front in front of Israel, and I think that Israel should uh, think to should make a rethinking about a uh, Gaza Strip. Yes, certainly. Because I think that we cannot we cannot uh, continue uh, uh, and re uh, continue this situation for a long time. Uh, okay, it yeah. will not be the country it will agrees not be with easy. you. Uh, Alona Vitar, thank you for being with us. Certainly uh, a, a, a dilemma, a large dilemma, no good options apparently on the table there around the Gaza Strip. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. But Prime Minister Naftali Bennett not only planning an upcoming visit to Cairo, but departing today for the United States, where he'll meet with President Biden on Thursday, reportedly to present a strategy for confronting both Iran's nuclear program and its regional activities without returning to a nuclear agreement. The reports claim that Bennett will argue that Iran's nuclear program has advanced too far for the now defunct 2015 Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action to have any relevance in 2021. Now, our correspondent Eli Ochenberg has that report. The beginning of a beautiful friendship. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett is heading to the United States for his first meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden. After long weeks of coordination, the Israeli Premier will fly to Washington Tuesday under strict coronavirus restrictions with a limited entourage that will stay in a capsule throughout the short visit. It is not yet clear whether Bennett will hold additional meetings in Washington besides President Biden, which will take place Thursday at the White House. Bennett arrives in Washington at a challenging time for Biden with the spotlight on the American withdrawal from Afghanistan. This could potentially give Bennett leverage when it comes to the American attempts to renew the nuclear deal with Iran. 
The timing of the visit is very important because we are at a critical point in relation to Iran. Iran is advancing in uranium enrichment. It has already significantly shortened the time required for them to accumulate enough material to build a nuclear bomb. We inherited a not-so-simple situation. Iran is behaving aggressively throughout the region. I will tell President Biden that it is time to stop the Iranians, not to give them a lifeline and to let them re-enter into an agreement that has already expired and is no longer relevant. But it's not just Iran that will be on the table. The Biden administration agreed to an Israeli request to delay the reopening of the U.S. consulate in Jerusalem until after the new government in Israel passes the budget in early November. The decision was seen as an indication as to how important it is for the White House to help stabilize the new shaky government in Israel and not to take steps that could harm it. Thursday's meeting might give another indication on what sort of foundations this stability will be built.